It's finally here. Our Piney Woods showdown is underway right now at the Lufkin Panther Gym. Let's hurry up and get through these doors because the girls, they just started their game at 6 o'clock. The parade is going great, John Carlos. The soccer team and I, we are riding on fire trucks right now all throughout downtown Lufkin. And to me, to the right, is the man who led the team to a state championship, head coach Russell Shaw. Just the last few weeks, what has it been like for you and your team celebrating the state championship? And to my left is the state MVP. Lufkin won three to one. This guy scored two goals and assisted the other goal. How many times have those highlights been running through your mind since the state championship? We're here at Dragon Stadium and long time no see. <laughs> Nakano just had football coach Bobby Race is with me live. We yeah. missed you, Bobby well, Race. I appreciate it. It's been a little <laughs> while, hasn't it? It's been a while. You know, you had a bye week, two away games. Now you're finally here back right. at home. I mean, how great is it to be back here oh, at Dragon Stadium? It's so good to be here and not having on being on the road for three <laughs> hours. I can't tell you. It's it's good to play at home. Exactly. And a little somber moment. We're coming off a heartbreaker with Corsicana overtime loss. You're now one and one in district. Right. And because of that, how much more is there of an emphasis to win this game against White House? Well, we need to win this game to still. But through the losses, though, lessons are learned. What were some of the biggest takeaways from that game that need to carry over to tonight? Well, we, we played really well defensively. You got a good football team. All right. Well, thank you, Coach. You bet. Promise me you won't ever leave us that long <laughs> ever again. Well, it's good to see you again. <laughs> they coach with each other at Kansas State, and Underwood considers Huggins a dear friend. All right, I got one quick question to ask this crowd. Who's going to win? SFA! I said, who's going to win? SFA! All right, you heard it from the crowd. They got their money on SFA. Every girl here knows what's at stake. A bit into the NCAA tournament, the seniors, they don't want it to be their last game. My advice, do not make this game any bigger than it needs to be. Just go in there, look to execute your game plan, play your hearts out, lay it all out on the line so that you have no regrets leaving this game. That's been exactly what you'd think out of a tournament final. Both teams, like you said, lots of energy, lots of chances. SFA's had more, but HBU's chances have possibly been more dangerous. Obviously, they're up 1-0. Exciting game, a lot of emotion, a lot of fouls, and I think it's going to continue <laughs> to be like that. Looks like you'll, you won't be toppling over anytime soon. No, no. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Of course, the bigger the better here in Texas. Thank you for showing us your beautiful mom, and good luck cheering on the boys tonight. While things were cool inside the bubble of the Houston Texans practice this morning, the competition was still hot. Head coach Bill O'Brien's got three guys competing for one starting quarterback position. A void left to fill with the loss of Arian Foster and rookies all looking to prove that they are worthy of wearing the Houston Texans logo come game day. If you know how to play golf, the rules for this game are simple. You tee off just the same, but trade out the clubs and golf ball for a soccer ball and then play on. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that he probably declared himself as the dance off champion. I like it. I like it. I like it. I did. He might have to get our, he, our own he dance did moves going little, on. A little stanky leg, a little, a little everything you know, going on like out there. He tried to act like he wasn't in there. He ripped off the shirt and then he's like, mm. good move, good move. Right All right, there. take us a break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, it is about that time to suit up and play ball. Now, if you just give me one little second so I can do just that. One arm here, one arm here. Here we go. All right, I'm going to adjust my mic here so you guys can actually hear me back at home. All right, it's, I think it's a pretty good fit, just a little big, but all right, yeah, here's a little subtle hint. If you can't tell by what I'm wearing, the SFA baseball season is upon us. It's that time of year again where dreams are coming true. NFL hopefuls lined up to hear their names called for this year's draft, so let's get to it. Card, please. Thank you. With the number one pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns selected Miles Garrett. Defensive end from Texas A&M. Can I get a whoop? Whoop. There we go, Brad. As projected, Garrett was the first to go, and he is the first Aggie to ever be the number one overall pick in an NFL Draft. The star from College Station had 31 career sacks and 141 tackles. At 6'4", 272 pounds, he can move. He ran a 4'6'4 on the 40, and the Browns have needed a pass rusher. Since 1999, only three Browns players have recorded 10 or more sacks in the season. 
All right, the Dallas Cowboys, they entered this year's draft with the 28th pick. They just made their selection. We are going live here, folks. Okay, from Michigan, they picked up Taco Charlton. He's a defensive end over there. He led Michigan in tackles and sacks, and he was an all-Big Ten first-team selection. So a good pick there for the Dallas Cowboys. And then an update for UT fans. Deontay Foreman, their running back, he did not get selected, but round two and three will be tomorrow starting at six. All right, the Texans, they originally had the 25th pick, but they traded up for Cleveland's 12th selection. Houston went with the quarterback, which they desperately needed, and they snagged Clemson's Deshaun Watson. At 6'2", 221 pounds, the quarterback threw over 4,500 yards and 41 touchdowns this year. Moving on to White House native Patrick Mahomes. He was also tabbed as a first rounder tonight. The East Texan was the number 10 pick and is headed to the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs, they traded up for the Texas Tech quarterback whose arm reigned over the record boards in Lubbock. He had 53 touchdowns last year alone, 93 in his career, and had 11,252 yards as well. Moving on to Angelina College Baseball, they're in a fight for a playoff spot. They played Northeast Texas Community College today, and with Hudson's Jesse Cravey on the mound, let's start off with some defense. Nathan Miranda gets the toe touch and double play to close the third. And once AC got up 2-1, it was home run central. First brought to you by Jacob Fink. That one's over the wall for a two-run homer in the bottom of the third. Miranda soon followed his lead with another two-run bomb, and that was just two of five home runs today. The Roadrunners closed this one in six innings with a 13-3 victory. They got a three-game lead now for the final playoff seed. Now to day one of high school softball playoffs. Central hosted New Waverly for the by district. Second inning, it was go time. Lexi Windsors sails this one for the floater, and it drops to make it a two RBI double. So up 2-0, here they come again. Rayleigh Dates drills this to left. It's another two RBI double, giving Central a 4-0 lead. Fourth inning, Bliss Johnson has a go at it, and that brought McKenna Bell in home from second. And we have another run roll. The Lady Bulldogs close their game in five innings at 10-0. Stay with us, we'll be right back. It's not always the player who finishes with the most points or gets the most playing time that makes the biggest impact on a team. Sometimes all it takes is one valiant spirit to change the lives of every player and coach around them. That kind of jolly soul is everything that is embodied in Hudson's Justin Forrest. Diagnosed with autism, Forrest hasn't let that stop him from making his own unique role with the squad. Entering his second year as team manager, Forrest has left an imprint on his friends that cannot be matched. That's why the Hornets made sure that Forrest senior night tonight would be one he'd never forget. Who is the biggest Hudson Hornet basketball fan? It's me. It's you? It's me, Justin Forrest. You heard it here first and it can't be denied. Justin Forrest is everything that makes up Hornet basketball. What's your favorite sport? Basketball. Now there's a Hornet right here. Without hesitation, head coach Rob Peterson opened his arms to Forrest as team manager and said Forrest is always the first one at the gym and the last one to leave a smile on your face. Basketball? It's the best. I almost done. Almost done. <laughs> Cause what's funny? You. It's me funny. funny. You are funny. Does everybody else think that you're pretty funny? Yes. He puts our, our basketballs away or gets them out for us or fills up water, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of fun to see him. In the beginning, he was very distracted. Hey, Chris Rob, I can't hear me. Yep, I hear you just good. Just, just good. And now he just kind of takes it's it on his own and wants to do it. So it's been fun to see him develop um, into those, things, those roles. But Forrest's role has grown to be so much more than just managing equipment. With a personality as big as his stature, he keeps the game fun. And you see how he points up in the stands and gets everybody wild up and yelling and it's fun. As he gets water back there, you can hear him talking to everybody and saying, hey, everybody. I mean, he gets everybody excited. And I mean, he really helps us in more than just getting water and pumping everybody up. 
There's more to Forrest, though, than just good laughs and basketball. He's become a part of the team and has bloomed into something much bigger than the game for the Hornets. He makes you see the bigger picture in life. Like, it's a game, you know, you want to win, but you see more than that. Like, it's getting you ready for afterlife, and that's what he does for me. I mean, he, he teaches me what I didn't know, and that's what I love about him. He walks in the gym, and you can't help but put a smile on your face uh, just because he's here, and you know it's going to be you know, some, something funny with him or uplifting with him. You always play for your school, of course, and you play for all your students and everything, but he's also one of those extra things that you play for. So if, if someone doesn't really have anything to play for, Justin's that, that one thing to play for. It's for those reasons and so much more that tonight the Hornets got a special jersey made just for Forrest to suit up and score his first ever bucket on senior night. An idea thought of by... Jacob Pierce. That's my buddy. Jacob! It is my senior night, but I, I'm, I love this, this experience for him. I mean, he, he, this is a one lifetime, and I'll be able to tell my kids when I have them that I had a, one of my best friends went out there and scored the first two points, and the gym just went ecstatic. One last question. Are you going to make that basket tonight? Yeah, yes. <laughs> You're ready. Man, I'm ready. So you think he's going to make that shot tonight? Oh, he's going to hit it. goes wild. He's always been here. He's part of the program. Anybody who's part of the program, you gotta let them have their moment too, whether it's big or small. So but tonight's his moment. A simple gesture with a much more complex meaning, changing the measure of a basket. Forest basket will no doubt go down as one of the best to ever fall through in Hudson, and it served as a reminder not to cheapen the value of a basket by two points. It's because of people like Forrest. Baskets can be measured in Hudson as symbols of blessings, opportunity, purpose, and life. Oh, and by the way, Hudson got the win over Jasper tonight. Forrest might have had something to do with that as well. We'll be right back. Next time you're cheering on the SFA men's basketball team, you might start watching the game a little bit differently from this point on. As much as the players are battling on the court, it's nothing compared to some of the deeper challenges these guys have faced in their day-to-day -day lives. Take Ivan Kinnett, for instance. He's easily the Lumberjacks' best shooter and leading scorer, averaging double figures. And there's more behind the 43-pointers Kinnett has sunk this year. You see, those three-pointers used to be his dad's favorite shot to watch his son make, until Kanet's father unfortunately died from cancer when he was just 16 years old. Although Kanet's dad isn't filling up a stadium seat, he believes his guardian angel is still watching over him from the best seat in the house. I had a role like thrown on me that I wasn't ready for. Adversity, you know, makes us stronger, and this kid's gone through a lot of it at a young age, and. That's why I think he's, you know, the leader that he is. He makes it look easy. But Ivan Kinnett's journey to Stephen F. Austin has been far from that. Born in Cuba, Kinnett didn't come to America until he was five years old, where learning English was the first of many hurdles ahead of him. I remember, like, earlier when I was, like, I had to learn English. I was in Esau classes because I didn't know any English, so I had to learn how to read and write in English and stuff like that, and I had trouble like speaking it. The start to a better life was all because of his father, who shares his name, Ivan Kinnett. His dad risked it all for his family by boarding a boat to leave all they knew behind in order to set sail to a land of opportunity. He was a hardworking guy, and that's whenever like I feel like I'm doing something that's hard or whatever, I would just always like you know think about him and my mom. Like they're just always been hardworking. His dad, talk about a tough guy, you know, his dad leaves his country, you know, and, and gets on a boat basically to escape Cuba and come here to the United States so he can find a better life for his family. I mean, he may be the toughest dude that we all know. Years later, the tough guy role was swapped all too soon. At just 16 years old, life made Kinnett the man of his household for his mother and sister when his dad passed away from cancer. Now when I think about it, like, it must have been so hard for my mom and she never really like showed any weakness and stuff like that. She just kept being strong. And I know during the time, like I really like, I was having a hard time with it and I still have some hard times with it even now. Although the grief never fully goes away, 
Kanet has overcome a sadness that at one point consumed him so much so that his passion for basketball ceased to exist. I didn't want to play basketball anymore. I was like, I got depressed again about my dad. Um, and then um, I took the year off and like kind of, you know, found myself a little bit. In finding himself, a big part of who he is is basketball. All it took was stepping on the court one more time, and the rest is history. Then I started playing again. I fell in love with basketball again, and um, I used basketball to like get away from it all. But even then, you know, it's still something like I think about my dad every day. So I mean, it's, it was hard, but basketball is an outlet for me. The game became therapeutic, and his triumph over depression came with holding nothing back, whether it be on the hardwood or in his heart. Honestly, it was just talking about my feelings and like what was going on and stuff like that. Because me, I'm like I, I like to keep stuff in and I like to deal with it myself, but it didn't work out. So, I, talking about my feelings and stuff, it helped, it helped me like get better. Yeah, I was an energy giver, in my opinion, and I think most people that are resilient and tough are gonna be energy givers. Those people who've gone through adversity and survived just grow stronger. And that's who Ivan Kinnett is. Following in his father's footsteps, Kinnett left all he knew, his family and his friends behind in Florida, only to gain a second family here in Nacogdoches. Unfortunately, his father passed away. Now we have him as a young adult. And I think not only myself, but I think the rest of our staff feels like it's our job to take him from young adulthood to manhood and continue to teach what lessons his mother and father have taught him to this point. And we take that role very seriously. When I came here, I really liked the family atmosphere and stuff like that. And it's just, it's an honor to, you know, put the jersey and have the SFA across my chest just because of all the people that have been here and what the, the culture here is and stuff like that. So it's really a privilege. I feel like I just want to, you know, make him proud and stuff like that. Um, I feel like if he was here, he'd be a little proud of me. And I just want to, you know, continue to just make him proud in my family. Kinnett's fighting spirit to win through his loss is exactly what the SFA team has needed this year. You'll be able to catch Kinnett and the Jacks take the court tomorrow night at the William R. Johnson Coliseum for a big game against Lamar. And you can cheer along with Kinnett's dad every time he hits a three. We'll be right back. The SFA bowling team has made winning a habit and once again find themselves in the NCAA championships for a third consecutive year. For a team that is just eight years old, SFA bowling is the most successful athletic program at the university. These reigning national champions are now looking to take the title in back-to-back -back fashion. The SFA Lady Jacks are ready to yet again bowl over the competition at the NCAA championships. As the reigning national champions they're looking to defend their title and win the NCAA championship for a second straight year it was unreal I don't think words can even describe what it's like to win a national championship like it still doesn't really feel real and we're going back a year later it's just an awesome feeling and we all want to experience again being on stage for the NCAA championship is totally different than anything I've ever experienced winning last year was like on a whole new level of anything I've ever won before. Going into this year's NCAA championship, the target on SFA has magnified as each team has bowled their best to try and beat the best. Going into it this year, knowing that we have a target on our back and knowing that we're defending the title, we just have to bowl our own game. You can't think about last year, you can't think about what happened in the past. Each day is a new day and you have to bring your best no matter what. SFA has a rich history of making it to the NCAA championship finals the last two years. Both of those finals have been against Nebraska, where the series for taking the crown is split at one and one. If these two meet again, the Lady Jacks will be looking to spare the Cornhuskers to win it again with this second go around. I would like to see Nebraska for a third time because we're one and one at each other right now. So I mean, to see who gets the third and final one would be kind of an awesome trilogy to it all. We just need to carry our confidence over there. We all know that we can do it. And I think we just need to believe in ourselves and keep our mental game strong. I think we're pretty confident about it. We know we can do it. We did it last year, so we just got to keep that mindset and keep our heads up. 
The coaches Steve and Amber Lemke credit their success to making the team more like a family. Last year when they won the national title, there was a lot of fun and laughter celebrating the crown with the Lemke's first baby. And now meet the newest addition to the bowling team. The Lemke's added a second member to their family recently and who knows, these babies might be good luck charms. Seeing as they're ranked number one in the state, it came as no surprise to see Central Heights win district this year, making it their ninth consecutive championship. Now the odds they defied in making it happen is a different story. After graduating 14 seniors last year, the Blue Devils managed to keep their winning streak alive with a completely new team and even under a new head coach. Winning one district title is tough. But the Blue Devils have made winning their ninth consecutive championship look easy, doing it in undefeated fashion. We had high hopes, and I think we carried it through by you know winning a ninth consecutive title. And I mean that's that's a big thing to carry, especially from a program like Central Heights. I mean I'm just glad that we can accomplish something like that, and hopefully we can keep it going. Winning is nothing new at Central Heights, but there were hurdles to overcome, like filling in the roles of 14 graduating seniors. The mentality was, you know, work hard. We got to fill those spots because, I mean, it is difficult losing many guys like that, that they were experienced. But these guys, we've come in just trying to fill their shoes, and so far we've done a great job of that. It also helped having a not-so-average JV team coming up that went 21 in one last year. I just kind of thought of it as our time to shine. I definitely think we play more together as a team. I mean, these guys are like my brothers. Uh, I'd do anything for them, they'd do anything for me. They're a group that knows how to win baseball games, and they just came together real well playing the varsity schedule, and, and they've done great. New head coach Travis Jackson has now stamped his name in the rich Blue Devil tradition and was thrilled to get the chance to build a winning team from scratch. When I interview for the job, you walk in the hallway in there, and there's like gold gloves all the way down the trophy case, so it meant something to me to keep the tradition going and, and get another one of those gloves in the trophy case. He is the best coach I've ever had. And he coaches us up and he's not he's not negative all the time and I mean there's moments where we all get down but he's always boosting us back up at 25 one and one Central Heights season is hopefully long from over now that it's playoff time we want to win it all I mean every team does but I feel like we have the ability to this year the way we've been playing we just got to keep it up we got to keep our heads up you can't get too cocky or else you know something's gonna bite you but I mean just as long as we keep playing our brand of baseball we'll be fine First up for Central Heights in the by district will be on Alaska. The SFA baseball field will be the backdrop to this series that starts Friday night at 7. East Texas will be represented after all at this year's high school girls basketball state tournament, all thanks to the Woden Lady Eagles. Woden is just one of four teams in the state still in contention for the ultimate title. It's been a historic year for the program as they never skipped a beat under the new direction of a first year head coach. As the school and Woden community gathered for a proper send off for the team this morning, the Lady Eagles let them know their work has just begun. If the state of Texas didn't know who Woden is, they certainly do now. A lot of banners hang in the Woden gym, but one has been missing. For the first time in program history, the Lady Eagles are headed to state. It feels awesome. We're so excited to get our banner, and we just we hope we can take it all away. It's a once-in-a-lifetime feeling that I'm very thankful to be a part of because not a lot of people get to say they're going to state. It all started when Lance Travis and his assistant, Trey Turner, had the tall task of taking over a successful program Paul Driver built for 35 years. In their first year, the duo has taken their new role in historic stride. We're just trying to, trying to keep his tradition going and um, of, of that winning mentality. But he laid the groundwork for us. But they came in with a plan for us to succeed and without them, this journey would not be possible. They've pushed us so much, They're, they just coach us so well. They're just always there for us, teaching us more and more every day. It's been a hard road traveled for number nine Woden in their journey to state. The Lady Eagles had to beat three ranked teams, including the number two ranked team in the state, La Pointer, and number eight, Tenaha. Knowing that we've shocked everybody around us, that we've worked so hard to impress everybody around us, it's, 
amazing. Set to play on their biggest stage yet, where every team has talent. They're leaning on what they've played for all season long. They're not playing for their teammates, they're playing for family. We talk a lot during the games, we talk out of the games, we just communicate, we love each other, we're just like a family. The chemistry of how well we work together and how well we know each other, we're basically a family that does everything together. We just feel like a family, like, you know, and we just push each other and motivate each other to get to where we want to be. In a bus loaded with big dreams and competitive spirit, the final destination for this family is well known, but fairly seen. See you in San Antonio! We're happy to make it, but we're wanting to bring back those rings now. We're all ready. We're ready to show everybody what we're made of. Woden is off to finish the fight they started. As you saw, Woden left for San Antonio this morning for the state tournament at the Alamo Dome. Their first opponent will be panhandled for their semifinal game on Friday at 10 a.m. If the Lady Eagles win, they'll play the winner of Martins Mill and Weimer in the state finals on Saturday at 1.30. There is no doubt that the SFA baseball team is off to one of their best starts to the season they've had in years. So it came as no surprise when the program reached the 500 win milestone. Now, the way they got the 500th win was a bit of a shocker when they put up 62 runs in their series against Incarnate Word last weekend. The 500 win feat was made possible from the man who has quite literally built this program from the ground up. And that's longtime head coach Johnny Cardenas. When this job came open and I was fortunate enough to get the job, uh, you know, I made it my, my point to try to improve the program and, and to move it in the right direction. 500 wins later, I'd say Johnny Cardenas is headed in the right direction. Entering his 12th year at Stephen F. Austin, this 500 win journey has been completely hands on for Cardenas. It seems like yesterday we were putting down grass here and and, and, and putting in chain link fence. And uh, like I said, there's nothing that's been done here that uh, I, I myself haven't, haven't, haven't done a little bit of to the point of my wife's even helped out put, you know, a uh, windscreen up and tear down fence. And uh, uh, we spent our honeymoon in Nacogdoches, Texas. And so uh, we, we've had a lot of, a lot of uh, growing roots to, to be planted here in Nacogdoches. Four years ago, if you look around this field, it wasn't the way it was. You know, he's, he's told us that, you know, he takes a lot of pride you know, because he, he saw this, you know, come up and build up to what it is now. As the program's all-time winningest head coach, Cardenas is responsible for 232 wins and counting. He's become not only a pillar to the baseball program, but in his players' lives and Nacogdoches' community. In the community, you know, he is a role model, so he, and he does a very good job holding that standard. He's always held me under his wing and coached me through everything, helped me when I'm down, helped me when I'm up, and he also helps, you know, with your family life. If anything's going on, you know, he's that one guy to go to, so, I mean, I love that about him, and he's one of my favorite coaches to this day. He's definitely made me, you know, the four years being here, made me a better man, you know, he's, he prepares guys, you know, to be you know, better off in life and, and to uh, become a great young man. As Cardenas has built this program over time, the team has blossomed through some growing pains. It was just two years ago when the program only won 17 games. This year, they're already at 17 wins with 24 games still left in the regular season. I have a special place for this group. Uh, this group, we have a lot of guys that we've recruited since the time that they were freshmen, and they've been here for four years, some of them even five, and, and to see it come through to fruition at this point, and to see those guys excel, um, you know, really warms your heart, and it makes you feel like you did it all for the right reasons. After last week in series, the SFA baseball team is actually at 502 wins. They'll look to make it 503 when they take on Northwestern State this Friday night at JC's Field in Nacogdoches starting at 630. The Hudson soccer team is on a historic playoff run their school and community will never forget. The boys soccer team has made their deepest playoff run in program history now that they found themselves in the regional semifinals. Under the direction of head coach Richard Meisel, he and this team have stamped a new standard for soccer at Hudson. This year we were just trying to uh, raise the bar a little bit higher. It's not just another team that's come through Hudson. To actually show our community that we can go far is, is exciting. The Hudson soccer team has gone through a miraculous transformation. Once, Richard Meisel took over the program five years ago. I'm proud of the kids. I'm proud of their efforts and, and where we come. 
as a program. During Meisel's first year at Hudson, the team went 4-14-2. Four, and two. four years later, they're now 22-3. and three. You guys have set the bar now where every team behind you has got to try to one-up it. And I don't know where it's going to end, but the bar has definitely been raised for this program. With the team motto of take the next step, each year has been a stepping stone to make it to the regional semifinals for the very first time. In 2015, Meisel led Hudson to their first ever playoff appearance and then won their first postseason game the following year. They've shown their heart, you know, and, and their mental fortitude. Uh, that's not easy. It's helped having a goal scoring record holder in Charlie Hernandez, who's put 35 goals away this year. He's just a dynamic scorer. He's he's what every soccer coach wants in a goal scorer. Somebody that you the other team just doesn't see coming. This year I was thinking more like being more of a team player than I was last year and obviously I have I have um, 17 assists, so you know, I've been passing the ball a lot more. And I guess the chances have been falling to me. I'm just lucky to put them away. When the whistle blows and the ball gets near him, look out, because there's a good chance that something special is about to happen. Not only do the Hornets have talent, they say they have an unbreakable bond that has yet to be broken this playoff run. We're a lot closer. It seems like, it seems like we work together and we strive to make each other better. This is our family. These are my brothers, and that's how I feel about these guys. I love him like a dad. He's always been there for me. Uh, he's pulled me out of some deep stuff, and, um, you know, he's always there telling me good job, good game, and everything. Like That's like my second dad to me. This is a family that has come together and, and is doing something special, and it's, it's awesome to see. Hudson will play Wheatley in their regional semifinal game tomorrow night. They'll play at AM Consolidated starting at 5. If you go to an Angelina College softball game, you got to keep your eyes up in the skies. The Lady Roadrunners have been putting on quite a show this year, cranking 99 home runs this season for a new team record. And you can bet all bets are on to see who will get the 100th homer, which could easily happen in their regional tournament this weekend. If the AC softball team's got 99 problems, hitting a softball ain't one of them. 60 games and 99 home runs later, the Lady Roadrunners have shattered their previous record of 76 homers set last year. We were expecting some big stuff. I think the coaches got together and we predicted over 100 for the season. So it's going as exactly as planned so far. Uh, we've been working a lot on pitch selection, making sure that we're hitting the right ball, hitting it hard. And I feel like throughout the season, our pitch selection has gotten a lot better, so that's why our home runs have gone up to 99. There's been a friendly competition all season within the team to see who can finish with the most home runs. Well, they come in and tell the, tell the other person straight up, you know, hey, um, that's 18 for me now. What do you got? Our lineup is so exciting to watch, uh, even when I'm coaching the bases. Uh, you know, every person that comes up can, can hit one out. Callie Holcomb currently leads the team with 18 home runs. If I hit one, I'll come back in and be like, all right, now you got to hit one, you got to catch back up. Just whoever can get the most by the end of the season because I have 18, but they're right behind me. Knowing that they're one blast away from the big 100 has been in the back of everyone's mind. And of course, there's some healthy competition between the team to see who will reach the milestone. I mean, all of us obviously want to hit the 101, but it's getting pretty competitive. Every time we hit one, we come in the dugout, we're like, all right, come on, let's go, who's next? And the whole team has pressure on them, like, oh, I got to be the one. Like. Everybody remember the 100, he's got to you know, try to be it. The 100th homer isn't the only thing AC will be chasing. They're hosting a competitive regional tournament this weekend, but at home, the Lady Roadrunners are 19-4. and four. It's going to be very, very competitive this year. It's, there's going to be things that define one game. There's going to be one play that defines a game, and that's just who's going to win is whoever makes that play or whoever makes the first error, they're going to be out. AC is entering as the four seed in the regional tournament and they'll open up against San Jacinto on Saturday at 530.